Welcome back. I've got issues with my knurling tool. Now, I don't know if you saw how far out it is on the lathe, but I've set it up on the bench here so we can take a closer look. Now, this top roller here, by default, it's around about five degrees uh, pointing that way. The lower roller looks to be quite straight, so you can imagine that this part of the wheel here will be digging in probably more than the bottom wheel or if not definitely this side of the wheel here won't be digging in very much at all when you're doing knurling. Now this angle of the top wheel is how it is by default. If I hold everything here you can see there's a lot of play in the head there. There's a lot of sideways movement on the wheel and also this type of movement. So there's a lot of loose things here on this knurling tool and I don't like it very much at all. Now I've had this job on the list of things to do for quite a while and the initial plan was to make up new side plates and take all the play out of uh, the pin that goes through here and on the wheels and all of that sort of stuff to get it running nice and straight. But this tool is one of those pressure tools. So you push the tool up against the work and you've got to wind the cross slide in quite a lot to get the pressure to cut the knurls onto the blank that you're knurling. And that's not a good thing for your bearings. And also if you're knurling away from the chuck a bit, you need to bring in, you know, tail stock support at the end here. Probably not a good thing for your cross slide either, putting all that pressure on it. So what I decided to do here is just to build a brand new tool. I've seen a lot of the home machinists on YouTube buy the Hemingway knurling kits and build their knurling tool from those kits. Now I'm always on a bit of a budget here, so I would prefer to make something up myself. However, the Hemingway kit looks quite good and looking at the design I can see how the arms that come out the front are supported by the side plates. It looks like it's a very sturdy tool so I want to build something similar to that design. All right so it's a little bit hard to figure out how all this is going to work if you don't have a plan. So I made a little mock-up here um, using cardboard and some wood that I cut out on the bandsaw so that I could see the sizes and just make sure that everything's going to work uh, the way it should do. And the good thing about this is that I can just trace these onto the metal and I'll be able to cut them out to the same shape. Anyway, simple design. There's two 5mm flat plates. So one's on the bottom and one goes uh, up here on the top like that. And in between there you have the two fingers, I guess you call them. And those fingers have the knurl rollers on the end here. They're actually cut into the metal in a groove uh, with a axle sort of going through there. Uh, they're hinged on the back here. So they move out and in depending if you're knurling a large diameter item or a small diameter item. This block in the middle is just a separator for the two plates on the outside here. And the bolts will go through this plate, through the center separator, through the plate on the other side, and then through another piece which is going to be connected to the quick change tool holder. And the way that these move is quite simple. You just have some steel. Um, this is too big, so it won't fit in the hole, but if you can imagine some steel in there. Holes drilled in this way, and a threaded bar in there. And you'd have some sort of handle at the top where you could wind it in, which will um, pull these in tighter, and to loosen it off to get into some bigger stock. So that's how that all works. Now these fingers and the spacer block are going to be 16 millimeter thick and I need to do that because these wheels are eight millimeters wide so when I 
cut a groove in here and put the wheel in, I need some room on each side uh, for support. So there's going to be four millimeters each side to support that knurling wheel. I almost forgot to mention that the knurling tool that I'll be making is similar to the basic knurling tool from Hemingway. They also have a more complex sensitive knurling tool. I'll probably make this at a later date when I need a knurling tool for my larger lathe. This is the 5mm plate and I'm cutting two pieces at 75mm long. That's about 3 inches. Those two pieces are tacked together so that I can machine them at one time. The ends are cleaned up and milled to 75 millimeters. There are four 8 millimeter holes that need to be drilled. Two down the center and two on the ends. So they're first spot drilled, then they're drilled out to 7.5 millimeters. And then I come back later and ream those holes out to 8 millimeters. Now I want to keep the orientation correct here, so I'm marking the two pieces. Now the corners are rounded off. And then I grind down the sides where those tack welds are holding it together. Alright, so I've cleaned up all of the edges and rounded them all round here on the corners, so that's all good. Uh, these holes are reamed out. I didn't actually have to ream this middle one, but I did because I had the tooling set up. But the other one is just being drilled out to 8 millimeters. Um, and yeah, all the sides are all smooth. So to get this apart, we just got little spot welds in here and we just wedged the screwdriver in here and hopefully I've ground it down enough for it to uh, come apart. These are countersunk bolts and I machined these up so that they can be used to hold the mechanism together. The bolts fit in like that. The spacer that we'll make next will fit in between here, that's 16 millimeters. And these bolts will screw into the part that gets fixed into the tool holder and I'll cut the access off. Now I'm working on the spacer and I'm also cutting out the fingers or arms as well because they're the same thickness as the spacer. Those are the items all cut out. Now the spacer will need to be cleaned up and two 8mm holes will be drilled into the spacer. And you can see here that this spacer is actually a bit long, so I need to cut that down as well. The surfaces on the spacer are cleaned up on the mill. I cleaned the end up here. I don't worry about the other end because I'm going to round that off with the belt grinder later. The holes are drilled out and I go to drill this one and then I have a bit of a senior moment and second guess myself so I get the plate and check it to make sure I'm drilling in the right place. Those holes are drilled out to eight millimeters. This is where I round off the inside corners this will give the arms clearance so that they can move closer together. The mechanism fits together like this. And then I'll work on the arms next. The arms or fingers are tacked together, the same as what I did with the side plates. This holds everything together and I can clean up the two pieces and duplicate them much easier when they're tacked together. 
I need to make a sacrificial parallel so I don't drill into my vise. I set the arms up on a parallel and I mill this sacrificial parallel down to about the same level. Then I need to cut out an area so that the arms can fit in there and be held up by this sacrificial parallel. I check that it's the same width as the parallel that I'm going to use. I check that the block fits in here and that works really good. Now I need to mark out where I need to drill the holes. The end hole is measured in 10 millimeters from the side and from the end. The pivot hole is roughly in the middle there. And the knurling wheel hole is put where it's going to work. We don't have to be accurate with some of these things as long as they're the same for both arms. The block is clamped into the vise. Then I start drilling and reaming out the two end holes. I also started on the 18 millimeter hole and everything was working fine. Then Nick Minute. Lift my scooter outside the dairy. Nick Minute. <laughs> okay, had a bit of a disaster here. I've broken off this drill bit in this hole here. Now I think I got through and the drill bit broke off on the back of this. Now I should have cut some relief in there. I did think of that before and I thought, nah, that'll be right. I'm hoping that I'm right through and if that's the case, I should be able to knock the drill bit out if it's still stuck in the hole. And then I'll cut some relief in this part at the back, the sacrificial parallel and then hopefully we should be okay. Yeah, looks like we are uh, just touched there. So I need to cut this out here so that the drill has a area to go into. I will be able to knock that out. That's all the way through, so that's good. I've gone through here with a 20 millimeter end mill and that has cleared out the area so when I'm drilling through this piece at the bottom will be similar to the part that I'm drilling but it won't have the piece here for the drill to get caught on as it did last time so this should work pretty good I hope. Okay, back into drilling and this works a lot better and I just work my way up to 17 and a half millimeters. And then I come through and ream the rest of it out to 18 millimeters. Here's the moment of truth. That looks pretty good to me. Now I need to cut some slots in these two fingers or arms. I'm using the center finder here to find the middle. I've already cut down with a end mill to make it nice and flat and I'm using a drill bit to drill all the way through here. I come back and just inch my way over left and right with a end mill and that eventually cuts the slot. Those slots came out pretty good. And the stainless steel bar will just fit in there like that. Now I start shaping the arms. I'm just cutting off what is on the outside of these lines here. Yes. Sometimes you have to revert to a hacksaw. Remind you of anyone else with a similar YouTube channel? And Yahtzee. 
some more shaping on the belt grinder. And I cut a little bit too deep in there with the angle grinder. I'll talk more about that later. Once the final shape's done, the welds should be just holding together and a bit of a tap and they come apart. The last machining job on these arms is to cut out the slots for the knurling wheels. And I test that out and that works great. The arms or fingers of the knurling tool are pretty much complete. I just need to go around and tidy up these sharp edges here. But everything seems to line up pretty well. Um, and they're just working and out like that. There's plenty of room and movement there. They're very well aligned as well, a lot better than the last tool. The only issue I had was that the hole inside here is fractionally bigger than eight millimeters. So although I've reamed this hole, and I mean this is just a temporary pin that just slides in there, um, it, it's not too bad in that hole there. There's a little bit of movement there. So probably not much I can do about it because to clean up the cuts from the angle grinder in here, I had to take quite a bit out and you can see here I got a little bit thin. Now this is on the underside, so all the pressure is going to be at the top. So I'm not too worried about it, but I can't really take that hole out much more. Well, I don't really want to. So I think I'll just carry on as we are and I'll make up some pins that may press into here. And that will be a little bit tighter than what it is in here. And then once that's all done, then we'll just kind of see how it works, I guess. In the end, I might need to go and remake these fingers or arms, but we'll just see how that pans out. So the next job I want to do is to make the two round pieces that go in here for the adjustment, that rod that goes down there. And this bottom one will have a, a thread in it, and the top one will just have a through hole, and then I'll need to make some sort of knob or thing at the top here that I can easily turn it to tighten it up and to loosen it off. This is 20 millimeter round bar and I'm turning it down to 18 millimeters. I finish it off with some sandpaper, make it nice and smooth and it's a really good fit on the arm here. You can see it's captive as well. Now the black lines here are the centers and I need to drill an 8mm through hole, which is this one. And the other hole is tapped out to M8 for the all thread to screw into it. Then the items are parted off. Also need to clean up the ends here as well. The top piece needs a flat area for the adjusting handle to push down onto. Now that those two parts are done, I work on a handle. This is some home cast aluminium. I just sort of true up the face and true up the surface. I need to put a M8 thread in the bottom here. And just to give it some aesthetics, I put a bit of an angle on here as well. This hole is for a little Tommy bar that will go through here so that you have something to hold to tighten it down. And that Tommy bar is made out of a piece of 10mm round bar and I take that down to 8mm. This is a little trick to smooth over the ends easily by putting it in the hand drill. 
I made a little wooden jig here so I didn't mark the aluminium piece. This is a lock nut that goes on, then the handle goes on, and then we tighten up that lock nut. I do a test fit with all of the parts. Then I check the movement and that works really well. The next step is to make little pins in here that are nice and tight. So pretty simple machining. And just knock those pins in. This tool holder needs to be mounted on the side and I need to use a bit of steel in here so I'm using some 20 by 20 I'll drill some holes through that and then I'll mill it down to fit into the tool holder. I start by squaring up the block. Then the last surface I take down to 13 millimeters to fit into the tool holder. So now I've got to drill some holes. and I tap them all the way through as well and then that block is bolted on the side so I've got to chop those bolts off and I also need to chop off the extra at the end here that is all the machining complete and I thoroughly clean the parts in acetone and then I use a cold bluing solution to make them black. The parts are put into a bucket of water just to neutralize that reaction. Then I oil them all up and assemble the knurling tool. I'll do some more testing with other materials like steel and brass but initially this looks like it's working really good it's going to be great to be able to use a tool that works properly i hope everyone has a great day and once again thanks for watching